better than to discuss this. There is nobody better in the land. I'm going to describe her as an amazing journalist and a lockdown files whistleblower. Good morning, Isabel Oakshot. How are you? Good morning. Thank you very much for that. Um, well, I'm all the better for the fact that the government has lost this completely ludicrous attempt to block the judge that they appointed to lead a public inquiry into the handling of the COVID pandemic from doing her job. They literally hired another set of lawyers to try to stop her doing what she's supposed to be doing. And their case rested on the notion that these WhatsApp messages uh, from Boris Johnson and between Boris Johnson and key members of the government during the pandemic, that those messages contained a lot of irrelevant material, as if the judge isn't qualified to distinguish what is and what isn't relevant. And having seen so many of those messages, I can tell you that the remarkable thing is how much of it is relevant. Actually, there's remarkably little uh, dross and gossip in there. It is all highly pertinent to our understanding of what happened during those discussions behind the scenes as they were imposing unprecedented restrictions on our lives. So this is the right outcome. And I think taxpayers would be entitled to be very annoyed that their precious funds had been wasted on what was always likely to be a completely futile exercise. I mean, brilliantly put. I mean, just from, from a layman's point of view, help me out. I mean, obviously you've seen the WhatsApp messages and I don't mean that in a flippant way at all. Um, what what I don't understand is is Boris Johnson, right? So you've got these WhatsApp messages which you say are relevant. You, you they say to this this Baroness Hallett, you run an inquiry, we'll give you support. The minute she asks for something they don't want to give, they take it to court. It's an absolute waste of taxpayers' money. I agree with that. Can you explain to me, Isabel, how come Boris Johnson said it's absolutely fine, and the Cabinet Office said it isn't? I I'd have thought Boris Johnson, for everything he's been accused of, would be hiding and saying, no, 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 I'm not going to give it to you. But he was fine about it. How does that work? Yeah, it's interesting what a mixed attitude various ministers have taken to this, because I know from the own pro the process that I went through, uh, working with Matt Hancock on his book, uh, that he had to ask the Cabinet Office uh, for permission on the manuscript. And he also had to go to a number of his Cabinet colleagues whose WhatsApps extracts of those appear in the book that Matt Hancock wrote. And some ministers were actually fine about their WhatsApps being made public. Among them, uh, Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, I think was quite relaxed, quite possibly, because his WhatsApps show him to have been very sensible throughout. Boris Johnson is only offering up a fraction of his messages. His, his excuse for that, his basis or justification for that, is that only one of his phones, and he had two different phones during the crucial period, is actually still available. The first one, which covers the vast majority of the pandemic period, was apparently basically taken out of his hands by the security services having been compromised. So we're only going to get a fraction of his messages. He probably feels he's got nothing to lose. And, and, and also, I, I got the distinct impression, actually, that he did it to score points against Sunak and the government. I'll give them in and you're going to court. I, it, it almost becomes a daily battle. Um, it, it, just very quickly, um, I don't want to go totally down this street. I was told the other day, Isabel, that this COVID inquiry won't finish till 2026. You talk about money. You talk about the British taxpayer being fed up with, with this government, you know, taking this to court and losing yet more money. 2026 that is ludicrous how much is it going to cost what difference will it actually make absolutely people should want to know the truth why is it taking so long seriously well i've got bad news for you i mean 2026 is just the earliest date at which they stop taking evidence and may have produced one or two reports from the earlier modules of the inquiry i can see it going on many many years longer than that and this has always been my problem with the COVID inquiry, the fact that it doesn't actually have a final deadline yeah. for totally wrapping up everything. You can't have an inquiry that's endless like this when you've got a pandemic situation which could be repeated. Uh, and you asked about costs. Well, we know already uh, that the costs have racked up to at least 100 million. They've done all sorts of unnecessary nonsense, a COVID memorial tapestry and endless videos. And generally it's become like some great group therapy session <laughs> it should forensically look 
at what happened, crack on with the job and have a very tight deadline. One year, two years maximum. Other countries have done this already, long ago wrapped it up. So we weren't ready for a pandemic and now we might spend five or ten years talking about why we weren't ready for it. In the meantime, another one could happen and we still won't be bloody well ready for it. Is in essence what you just said, right? That's exactly the case, and it's oh so British, isn't it? Um, Isabel, I must say, having looked at Benedict Spence and listened to his dreary voice all morning, it's an absolute <laughs> pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much indeed. Isabel Oakshot on Talk Breakfast 23. I'm only joking, by the way. No, I agree. It was, uh, a, it was a yeah. wonderful tonic to everything that well, I've given Well, you. listen, here's the thought. Ben and Jerry, isn't that an ice cream? Not a very good one. Do you not like Ben and Jerry's ice cream? Oh, I do, but well, they talk a lot we, about their political views. We've been given a sense of entitlement and easy pickings in this country for years. We no longer think that certain jobs are worthy of us, and we do the work. They are done with inter, in, indolence and resentment. In, don't want to. Added to that, you have the greed of businesses drafting in the skivvies of foreign workers to do the jobs we're too special to do for half the price. No wonder we're screwed, says Ian in Yorkshire. He th thinks we should think... launch an ice cream. Um, I'm not opposed a, to that, there, necessarily. The problem with Ben and Jezza is this. Yeah. I absolutely insist my name comes first. Talk TV.